Well, good morning and welcome and thanks to the folks that are making this possible from Ford and obviously to the chamber and congratulations on another great event and I hope as we continue our conversation more, more folks will join us because after talking in the green room I think this is going to be an excellent conversation but I want to start with this. If I would have told you seven years ago that this day I would be hosting a panel called Michigan leading the way, how many of you would have thought that was probable? We were leading the way all right, but not in some of the ways you want to lead. And here we are seven years later with a lot of success stories that you've already heard here on the island and that you've heard throughout the past few years. But I want to take these folks, these people who have been hands-on right in the middle of making sure that there has been that kind of redevelopment and find out how exactly we got back to the point where we were when so many people had counted us out. Not just down, but we were out for the count. We know that's not true in Michigan. It's not going to be true in Michigan, but we've proved it. So I'm going to start by, uh, Kelly, I'm going to start on the far side and just start with you to get a, a sense of where we were and where we are. And uh, obviously, I want to talk with Brooks about uh, Oakland County next. But. Well, you know, it's never fair to ask the Democrat how things were going seven years ago and then how they're going now. But well, this, they're Well, that awesome. wasn't about politics. That <clears throat> yeah. was about economy. But, but they are awesome. And, you know, Mal Malcolm Gladwell, who spoke just before us, said that you can never look at the short term when you're thinking about something. You have to look at the long term. And he said, you know, 10, 15 years, that's when you need to be expecting to reap the rewards of any action you take today. So the administration, several administrations have done a great job, in particular the Snyder administration, in putting together tax policies in particular that are very helpful to the business climate, strengthen the economy. But there's one last piece of the puzzle, and you know what I'm going to talk about. I couldn't imagine. It's a personal property tax. How many of you actually know what that is, or you just pay it when your accountant says, here you have this other thing? First of all, it's not personal because individuals don't pay it, businesses pay it. Pay it on your equipment every year, every single year. So it's the one most onerous, unfair, double tax on business. We're the only state in our region who has it, and we have an opportunity to get rid of it on August 5th. It's called Proposal 1. The legislature, both sides of the aisle, the public sector and the private sector strongly support this issue. No opposition, but it's, a, it's an issue that voters don't talk about at their kitchen table. So we have a real challenge to get folks to vote for Proposal 1, or we are back to square one on the last piece of the tax puzzle. So that is the, it's the one thing that we are not leading the way on yet, but we have an opportunity to. So make sure the button that was in your backpack, don't toss it out. Don't give it to your kids unless they're 18 and older and a registered voter in the primary. So make sure you wear that button proudly and make sure that you tell everyone about voting yes on Proposal 1 because it's good for small businesses and large businesses and it's good for every single community in the state. We get rid of an onerous, unfair double tax. One vote, vote yes. Okay, I'm done now. This message was not paid right, for by was regulated funds. All right, vote yes on one, right? Uh, All right. <laughs> The um, uh, one quick note on that, and, and one of the reasons that Kelly and her folks and a lot of people are pushing so hard, you say, well, it doesn't have any opposition. It's a single ballot proposal. But the problem is that historically, if people see a ballot proposal that they don't know what it is, the answer is no. Right. So it, that, that's kind of the, the point behind that. Yeah. Brooks, let's, let's move to you in Oakland County. You've seen your county over a lot of years go through a lot of incarnations. We see redevelopment, we see things that are happening there. What did you have to do there to, in keeping with our theme, try to lead the way, particularly as we came back uh, from a state that maybe felt the Great Recession more than many? I couldn't agree more with my fellow Democrat, Kelly, <laughs> that uh, you gotta have a long vision, you gotta have a long-term view where you wanna get, because it's not gonna happen overnight. Uh, we didn't get into these holes in two, three years, not gonna get out of them two, three years. And uh, I sort of, my team and I do have the long term, like we're the only county in Amer America today that has a three year budget. So we're in balance of 14, 15, 16. We actually have 17 already, so we're working on 18. We have that many year lookout. I'm talking line item detail, I'm not talking projections. 
Um, and then you, you can see problems on the horizon and you can deal with those problems before they manifest themselves in the current fiscal year. Well, you do that across the board in, in all kinds of departments and the long range is what I think uh, separates Oakland County from the competition. We're the only county in America that has paid off our legacy costs. We have no more legacy costs. It took us a long time to get to that point, but we did. We floated uh, some bonds, actually it was called COPS, Certificate of Participation. Uh, but we paid it off, and now we're, we're debt free. That's why Wall Street loves us. That's why we've earned AAA and hold on to it. So I think the long-term view that Kelly was talking about is exactly what you have to have, and then focus on a, 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 you know, a mechanism of some sort to get to that, to that goal. And uh, so that I think uh, our, uh, now Snyder is doing exactly that for the state. I think he does look long-term, and I think the programs he's implementing are going to take some time, but uh, I think it's the right approach. Sam, I want to talk to you from a little bit more of a personal standpoint because I've watched as you and a number of other entrepreneurs in Grand Rapids have changed the landscape dramatically in the last 20 years. You've been doing it for 25 years, I think you said earlier. What, do, what have you done over that period of time, but particularly over the, the, the past few years? Because I, I, I'll throw a premise out that you can disagree with. Uh, Grand Rapids may not have felt the pressure of the recession in the, the same ways that some parts of the state did. We certainly felt it, but maybe not as deeply, and you may disagree with that. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I guess I, I, maybe I, I'm not the smartest guy to comment on, on economics, but you know, I, I think we, we all felt the, the most recent, uh, I think no one is immune from the most recent in, in, uh, recession. I can talk about that in a minute, I guess. But you know, in Grand Rapids, I think we, uh, we, uh, we frankly, we did take a, absolutely a long-term view and uh, I, I think our, our culture, I mean, you, you see our re, uh, uh, revitalized downtown, and there are a lot of pretty buildings, but they are really just uh, manifestations, really, of the culture that we have that makes it work, which is, you know, uh, you know we, we, uh, we really do have a long-term view, and we have a lot of folks who uh, care and get it, um, you know, pro uh, professionally. Uh, you know, I have, uh, I'm having a riot right now. I mean, really all the stuff that, that we collectively have been, have a, as a community have been working on for 25 years are literally coming to pass right now, which is, you know, and that's aided by, you know, national trends, demographic inversion, et cetera, that, you know, the two demographic, primary demographic groups that are returning to cities you know, uh, baby, uh, baby boomers. You know, I, interestingly enough, the, the 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 group that fled cities, and then the quote unquote millennials are are sort of fueling this revitalization uh, around the county, country. That is certainly uh, happening uh, in Grand Rapids. You know, we're uh, now at CWD. We're on uh, 32 buildings that uh, we have restored or built just within the city limits in the past uh, 25 years, and. Uh, uh, it's incredibly rewarding uh, to uh, live and work in my favorite city in my favorite state. And I, you know, on a state level, um, you know, without I'm wearing my pledge pin today. Uh, the, you know, we we uh, we reframe the question. I mean, to use Malcolm Gladwell's terminology, we elected a guy who wasn't a politician, who wasn't interested in in blame. He was interested in results, and uh, it's extraordinary. You know, and, and uh, it's been incredibly rewarding for me professionally because we were able to capitalize on opportunity uh, that others didn't see. And, uh, and now with the, the tremendous resurgence of both Michigan and uh, uh, her, her, her second city and I believe her first city, uh, we're in an incredible place for the future. Let's talk about that first city uh, a little bit because uh, I did an interview uh, earlier this week and somebody was talking to me about occupancy downtown. Yep. Was it 98, 97%? Correct, right. In other words, if I want to move there, I probably can't. No, that's right. Yeah. I certainly could have a few years ago. No question, right. What happened? Well, I, I think um, uh, a couple different things. First of all, to go back to the comment that Brooks made uh, with respect to the governor, I mean, just getting the tax policy correct for the, for the business community, I think, is, was key. Um, you know, we've moved from um, a, 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 a state that had a poor perception nationally to one that one uh, has a, a, a top area for entrepreneurs to come to the sixth in the country in, in recent years, and then secondly, um, uh, the 15th best place to do, uh, do business from a tax policy. So that's made, made a place for us to invest. 
But getting back to Detroit, um, you know, and again, we're going back to Malcolm Gladwell, you talk about uh, innovators, you talk about people who are going to stick their neck out, um, and you have the people like Dan Gilbert who uh, invested in, in, in the city before anybody else did. And I, I don't think he, you know, he's a, he's a, um, uh, a capitalist. He wasn't doing that because uh, he was just doing it to be altruistic. He saw the, the, the future in Detroit and, and made the effort to um, take that chance, and, and, and you see that a, a great number of people come into the city uh, a great incubator uh, f uh, for um, um, doing different things, uh, and you know, and we've got a great story. You know, the grittiness of Detroit, uh, frankly, is an attraction for young people. Um, uh, the the um, it doesn't cost as much to live in Detroit as it does in some other of the major metropolitan areas. That's a cool thing, and a lot of good things going on from from that standpoint. Uh, and um, and then of course, um, I thought it was really inspiring yesterday. All the things that. Um, our new mayor's doing, um, uh, which is really moving the city forward too, and that just happened in the last year or so, but, but it's, he's, it's, that's really making a big difference as well. You talked about the gritty nature, you talked about the improvements that have been made. If you didn't hear the mayor's presentation yesterday, the improvement in services, something that many of us might think as simple as street lights. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes such a, a powerful impact on a city, but in, in addition to that, you are starting to see this influx come back in, but you've got to do something to retain them. You've got to do something, you've got to have the jobs, you've got to be able to make sure that those investments are paying off for those entrepreneurs. How do you make that happen and how do you get the talent in that you need to take that next step? Well, I think to, to make those kinds of investments, um, uh, uh, you know, we have the uh, um, uh, a, a livable city, where people want to be, they can move around. You know, the the uh, the millennials, uh, they're, they're not as much interested in, in owning a car and driving around like like uh, uh, I used to. I still do. So the M1 rail, which is going to happen, uh, and you know, the, the studies tell you there's going to be a tremendous amount of development that, that goes along from where, where that goes from uh, from downtown to the new center area. Those kinds of uh, of, uh, of um, investments in the city will bring people uh, and the kind of people we need to stay there, to live there, to work there, uh, and raise their families. And, and you know, the family side of it is, 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 uh, is I think, we maybe get this a little bit later, it's gonna be a, a challenge for us. I mean, when, when people start to have families, they wanna have good schools. You know, they wanna have good places to shop. Those things are, are things that are gonna be coming uh, to, uh, and are, we, we need in downtown Detroit. And I think they're coming, but there's, those are challenges for us as we, as we move forward. Sam, I told you this story a little bit earlier. When I was first flown in to, uh, interview for the job in Grand Rapids, they drove me by this big pile of dirt and it had a bunch of metal spires sticking out of it and they said, we're going to build a new arena down here and when we build that new arena, then there will be restaurants that will develop and nightlife and entertainment and then people will move back downtown and there will be housing and there will be a vibrant city and that was 20 years ago and Grand Rapids was a nice enough place but vibrant is not exactly the word I would use to describe downtown two decades ago. I would today, they were right, my skepticism was wrong, I'm happy to say, but how does that happen and how do you take that next step that we're talking about like in Detroit? Yeah, the, he talk, he's talking about the Van Andel Arena. The, I, I like to refer to that building as the building that made my career uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, previous to that, we had uh, acquired uh, just the early 90s, there, had, there was a, a, uh, another uh, recession it was not nearly as deep as the recent one, but a little bit of a banking crisis, and there were there were folks uh, leaving, and uh, there were some. We bought the, the paper on some buildings nearby, and and, and uh, just actually bought the uh, 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 ability to foreclose and some vacant warehouses for three bucks a square foot. You know, I look like a genius today, but back then, you know, uh, people thought I was crazy uh, prior to Arena, um, and but people thought everybody was crazy. Uh, but uh, you know that's that's one of the things that we have we have going for us in in, in West Michigan, which I think you know we we have the opportunity to to duplicate in in Detroit. Uh, is you know we have this uh, we have in, in in West Michigan this 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 culture of caring that has manifested itself uh, repeatedly in uh, in our urban center and. It's not written down anywhere, but almost without exception, our major philanthropic initiatives, and I would you know, argue and, 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 and be able to substantiate that our urban rebirth in the core city has been anchored by philanthropy. But 
you know, each of those major philanthropic or public-private partnerships has had as its secondary purpose, secondary or tertiary purpose, the revitalization of the city, which isn't necessarily written down, but you know, you things like the Van Andel Arena. I mean, prima facie, the cost of that building and could have, would have been less had it been built in a greenfield somewhere. Um, but the return on it is far greater by locating it where it is. Uh, and likewise with, you know, the Grand Rapids Art Museum, uh, DeVos Place, uh, uh, Van Andel Institute, da 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 da, you know, on and on, Urban Institute for Contemporary Arts. Uh, so, and, and we continue to, to stand on the gas. So, and, and we've lucked out, again, with, you know, demographic inversion and other things that, you know, I, I don't, I think are more than trends. Uh, we're just in an extraordinary position. But I also think that we consistently reframe the question. And, and it used to be that we used to think of when we had some sort of project, it used to be in the, in the, we would liken it to something like dot, 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 insert major metropolitan area here. And I think now we, you know, Forbes just called us the number three mid-sized city for job creation in the United States. And, you know, we, we need to focus not on we're not San Francisco, we're not New York, we're Michigan. And you know, we need to focus on, on what works and, and, and scale it and exploit it. I wanna bring everybody in and I would like to go with you if I could, Brooks, because I see three different models. I suspect the model of investment uh, in Southeast Michigan is different than perhaps the homegrown kind of investment. There's more than just homegrown investment, but there's a lot of that. And I suspect it's different in, in Oakland County too. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how it works there. Well, I don't think Oakland has uh, DeVos or Van Andel or Cook, or you name the people who admire. Um, it's pretty, pretty uh, it's a melting pot. Uh, everybody works hard. We got a lot of employment. Uh, our economy's been very strong, uh, although th during the recession, you got to keep in mind that Chrysler is headquartered in Oakland County, and General Motors was, at that point in time, my largest employer. So in 2009 alone, we lost 60,000 jobs. I don't think any other county got hit as bad as we did, given the makeup of our workforce uh, and the employment base. But uh, we're, we're about, we've gained back about four-fifths of that loss and uh, are you know, beginning to you know, show some signs, some strong signs of recovery. Uh, we track what sectors are growing. Healthcare is now our strongest sector, as opposed to automotive. And we've done a lot of research into what I call the knowledge-based economy. Again, long-range planning, I've got a plan to move. It's gonna take me 20 years. I'm about uh, 12 years into it to move away from dependence on manufacturing into the knowledge-based economy. And according to Fulton and Grimes, the economists from U of M, they said, we're well on our way. It's going exactly as we had planned and it's gonna change the economic base of Oakland County so we won't have uh, the peaks and troughs we've had because of our reliance on one sector. Um, but we don't have any angels. Uh, all the guys who make their fortunes in the car companies, uh, they take their, their fortunes and they go to Arizona or they go to Florida, they go to California, but they don't hang around. Right. It's, not a, it's not a bad place. Might be eat. you, Brooks, I'm <laughs> just saying. It might be you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but over in, in Grand Rapids, and I, I don't study it, but I'm aware, uh, every one of the families who, who've made their fortune has stayed there and reinvested philanthropically. Yeah. You, you know, Rick, we have offices in Detroit, Lansing, and Grand Rapids. And what is fascinating to me is that each city has a very different personality and sense, and you can feel it. So Grand Rapids is like that cheerful, upbeat, preppy cousin of yours who really kind of drives you a little crazy because they're so happy. They do pillow fights, like citywide pillow fights. They do lip dubs. They, do, they are above the top in terms of fun, cool, hip stuff. They have really landed on a personality that fits that city, and it is wonderful. It is nothing like what I thought it would be. I thought it was, sorry, all white, super conservative. It's not at all like that. It's a hugely diverse city, and it is, it's just fun and upbeat, and they're way too happy. In Detroit, <laughs> Detroit's very different, but it has the same sense of personality, but it is a get tough, gritty, urban commitment to, by golly, we've got a problem where we're gonna solve it. It's a very different feel, but it's a hip feel, and people really wanna be part of that hip, gritty survival and thriving of the city. 
Lansing, where I live, is still struggling with exactly what kind of a personality we want to have. We struggle a little bit with what we really want to be. We don't want to be Ann Arbor anymore. And <laughs> I don't think anybody does. But uh, we don't want to be Ann Arbor anymore. We really kind of want to be Grand Rapids, but we don't want to tell anybody. And we're really glad we're not Detroit, but we haven't figured out exactly what our personality is. So the challenge for the state, sorry, I didn't even mention Oakland County. That's okay, there we go. We again. love, there you go again, <sighs> third wheel. <laughs> but the, the challenge for cities, I think, is to make sure that the services that people need and want are in the city. So when I lived in Midtown in Detroit in the mid-70s, there was a grocery store that was two blocks away that sold expired food. Everything on the shelf had expired, <laughs> everything. That's not the case now. No. Up the street from where I lived is uh, Great Lakes Coffee. It's hip and cool and everybody hangs out there. There's a whole food store. So you've got some of the amenities you need for living in Midtown Detroit. You don't have the school system yet in Detroit that people who are raising their kids ultimately want, but you do have the schools. They're just charter schools. So people are able to stay in the city and educate their kids in the way they want to. So the challenge is making sure that the state creates ways in which every city can thrive and build on its own personality and deliver the services everybody wants for their families and for their businesses. Yeah, I, uh, if, I, if I may. Sure. Please. Yeah, the, uh, again, as a, as a student of urban revitalization over the past you know, almost 25 years. You should have graduated by now. Yeah. Huh? No, you never graduate. <laughs> never graduate. But you know what? It, it, what's, what's interesting is, is, is talking about the school question. Uh, the school question is necessary for long term. Uh, Absolutely. You, but you, to, to have a, a revitalized urban core or downtown, is you do not you don't need the school you don't need schools arguably uh, the 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 cities that we might agree on as the most vital across the country all have horrible t school districts so the the phenomenon of of call it suburban movement during school age uh, is is not so you're you know, saying we've got that one nailed out? No, I'm not saying that at all. I, I think it's from a retention perspective, it's compulsory. And actually, we are facing that right now in Grand Rapids. One of my latest uh, uh, projects, and some of you, there are a lot of people from West Michigan in here, so they, they know my zeal, uh, is, is education. Because, you know, I, I've now, you know, I live in the city, and we're attracting uh, talent and young people at, at a significant pace. But they're, they're almost without exception single and or uh, unmarried uh, and without children. Dinks in some case too, to say, to cases too. We need to, we're gonna have an at bat with those people because they're living in the city, they're living in the near neighborhoods and when, when and if they decide to procreate, we're gonna have an at bat. And you know, we need to be at ready, we need to be ready because from my perspective, I wanna retain them in the city. Uh, you know, we are, you know, uh, one of the great things about Grand Rapids is regardless of some, if someone lives in Ada, East Grand Rapids, Hudsonville, or Jenison, they generally call themselves Grand Rapidians. Um, but, you know, my personal uh, uh, passion is for that thing called the city of Grand we Rapids. We call ourselves Grand Rapidians all the way over in Oakland. Give me a fiber on that. <laughs> you called yourself there, Grand. You there, so. there, there are two things. One, I want to talk a little bit more about that. We've got about 15 minutes left. And I want to talk about, all right, things look a lot better in the southeast. Things look pretty good in Grand Rapids. Things look good in Oakland County. You've got a perspective across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But before we go into what we're going to do, I've lived in Grand Rapids for 20 years in and around, so as not to offend Sam, because I'm not in the city limits. I have not once ever had a pillow fight. And I just want to make sure <laughs> that. You know, that's not what people have said. But about there you. are people that are videotaping this. <laughs> uh, let, let's talk about, let's take uh, the, these last few minutes that we have. If we all agree that we, as urban centers, as big thriving counties, as rebuilding downtowns, have made progress, and we as a state, are leading the way in so many areas where it might have been surprising to think of even a few years ago. What do we do next? How do we continue to lead? What do we need to do to 
get that grocery store nearby if it isn't? What do we need to do to retain those folks who do decide to have children and would still like to stay in the core cities? What do we need to do next? Let me start well, with you. Well, Rick, let me take a little bit uh, bigger picture view sure. on that response that I might. And, and for example, one of, the, one of the initiatives that the chamber has been very supportive of the governor on is the whole transportation and uh, um, repair of our infrastructure with the roads and the bridges and all the rest. Uh, and I think it's, it's uh, um, uh, commendable for him and commendable for our, uh, the House of Representatives in the state here that have passed a, a funding bill, uh, are, are talking about a funding bill for that, I haven't passed this year, they're talking about a funding bill to, to, to spend as much as that one and a half billion dollars each year for the next number of years to improve our, our, our infrastructure. That's not an easy thing to do because it necessarily uh, 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 is going to create increase in costs. Uh, but I think um, we're committed to do that. And so I think uh, um, as, that, as that bill gets discussed and, and moved along, uh, uh, and I hope it does move along, that we'll have a, be, in a, be in a place um, where uh, we're going to have the infrastructure in, the, in, 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 in around Detroit and around the state to attract businesses from all over the globe uh, to do business in, in our state, which I think is going to be key for Detroit uh, and key for, the, and key for our, our entire state. On top of that, um, a couple other things that we got to get done in Detroit. We got to get that bridge built. Um, 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 you know, uh, Congressman Peters is pushing hard to get the $200 million in funding for that, that plaza in, in, uh, uh, on the Detroit side of the, of the, of the, of the river. And uh, that's got to get done. And, and when that gets done, again, one of the busiest border crossings in the, in the country and just going to really drive economic development in the city, which is, of course, what we need. And look, the, key th the two key things um, uh, you know, for Detroit, and it's not, it's not, it's not news, uh, it's jobs. And jobs and jobs and residents. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Mayor Doug was up here yesterday and said, "Evaluate me, whenever that is, four years from now, on whether we've built the uh, 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 the population in the city of Detroit." Absolutely key because uh, because you have to have the people, you have to have the tax base uh, to be able to fund the pro kind of projects you want to fund. I mean, um, uh, great credit to Brooks and what's going on in Oakland County. Outstanding tax base there, clearly, because you can do the things you want to, uh, so many things you want to do. Detroit. Doesn't have that, and doesn't, isn't quite there yet, but we got to get there, and, and those are some of the things that we got to get accomplished. Sam, what do we need to do, either at home or across the state? Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, you know, just again, reframing the question. We've got a platform now, uh, and, and how do we, uh, what's next? So, uh, you know, what are our greatest assets? Uh, and frankly, you know, we're in one of them. Hats off to the Musser family. But, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the natural resources that are Michigan, you know, I'm privileged enough to serve on the Department of, uh, the Department of Natural Resources Trust Fund. And, uh, you know, the DNR has done a lot of work on, our, our, on articulating the demand for access to those natural resources. And they are uh, one of, if not the greatest attraction for tourism, certainly, but also for people moving here. And they're stu that's stuff that, we, that nobody else has. So, you know, we're doing a lot of work on how to e extend and, and expand access to those natural resources, both, you know, where they are and connecting them to our, uh, where our population centers are. So from, you know, trails, et cetera. So that's, that's important to exploit. I think uh, uh, we need to stand on the gas on what's working. And, and this may be unpopular, but, uh, but the state is gonna have to be involved. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, as a country, et cetera, call it invested in, in the uh, evacuations of cities, and we're going to have to invest in the repopulation of them. Uh, uh, the, we, we have in, in, in the state of Michigan something called the Community Revitalization Program, which is a, 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 an evolution of what used to be the Brownfield Program. And uh, it actually, our governor is an accountant, as you know, and the Brownfield program was a tax credit, which, you know, doesn't make any sense from, a, from an accountant's perspective because it's a, it's a contingent liability that you can't quantify. Um, so now it's a quantifiable appropriated amount that is actually uh, a grant, if you will, to, to clo close the gap on urban redevelopment at present. And, uh, uh, you know, in, the, in suburban, development that, that has been subsidized by, in, by horizontal infrastructure, where you know, now we're going to actually have to take a more primary role in making it 
a, a place to, to, for viable investment. And uh, we actually, I, I, was, I, I, was, I served on the, uh, the committee that, that designed that, that uh, incentive, it is, call it what it is, and we actually did the math on the return. We back-tested all of the, brown, the suite of brownfield credits on the return, prima facie return, that the state of Michigan got on them, and it was compelling. Uh, it, and what, what's not, what we didn't factor in is the return that is difficult to quantify, which is, you know, Meyer in our community or Amway, the, the ability to hire and attract talent as a result of all of that revitalization in the city. I mean, the, the director of, our, of the Grand Rapids Art Museum is from Austin, Texas. The, you know, the, the new director of Art Prize is, is from California. All these, these people had never even seen Grand Rapids before they were solicited for the job. And 15 years ago, we wouldn't have had a, we wouldn't have a chance in hell at attracting them. So, you know, maybe unpopular, but we need to, uh, we need to talk about how we, uh, how we expand that. And, uh, and you, you know, just sort of on a, on a high level, I think we need to reframe the question. And Detroit, and, and talk about where our, you know, I, I said this before, talk about where our, where our assets are. We have, in Detroit and Grand Rapids, we have the ability to, to, to differentiate from San Francisco, New York, et cetera. Those, I call those, so I call it passenger cities, where, where people go because of what they already are, where Detroit and Grand Rapids are participating cities. You go there, and you can be, be part of what it's becoming. You can actually put your shoulder to the wheel, and it's less expensive, and, and young people like that. Uh, Brooks, I want to ask you the same question about where you go forward, and maybe incorporate some of that public-private partnership that, that, that Sam talks about, because I know uh, that there are certainly those cases that have taken place in, in your county, uh, and where, where there is, obviously, uh, you said it may be unpopular, but there certainly is a role for government as, as we move forward. What do you see in Oakland, Ken? <clears throat> well, I think uh, Sam made a good point that you got to you got to just figure out what you are and what you're not. You know, Oakland County is not uh, you know, San Francisco Bay area, and so so we know what our strengths are, and we think some of our strengths. I'm going to play to those strengths. I'm going to enhance those and work for them. Uh, one is uh, as Hank just said, <clears throat> we got a really a strong economic base. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we have. Yeah. And we have clean air. <laughs> <laughs> we um, have that, uh, thank you, uh, that very strong, diversified economic base. And so we've done our research. We know what, what the 10 sectors, we call them emerging sectors. And so we're working to develop those 10 sectors. And when we did a fair amount of research back in 03 and 04 before we launched the program called Emerging Sectors, um, we laid them all out on my conference table. And all of a sudden, uh, something became pretty obvious. Uh, and we validated it through Pat Anderson's group. Uh, every one of those sectors has a line through it, which is basically high tech. And it's gonna, you know, therefore, the knowledge-based economy is essential. You're gonna have to have, if you really wanna be a participant and player in, in, in those sectors, you're gonna have to have probably a college degree and maybe a postgraduate degree. And uh, so I'm, I'm aiming for that. I mean, the national average for four-year degree, I think is like, 27%, in Michigan's 24%, we're at 40, 49%. So we have an educated work base to start from. So we're gonna go after those sectors and we, have, we are just beating the doors. We go all around the world. We have trade missions in every continent trying to bring in the best and brightest and we're very good at it. Uh, we now have 982 foreign-owned firms in Oakland County from uh, 34 nations. And <laughs> so we're bringing in the, the smart people to take those high-tech jobs. Therefore, they demand better schools and they're getting them. We have national academies and uh, we have the, uh, you know, the school for the Japanese school, which is you know, internationally known. Um, so that's just one program, okay? That's, that's the, uh, the educational component. Uh, then we also, uh, the, the diversification, we, that, that's uh, the emerging sectors part. Uh, I researched and found out about Main Street, which is under the National Historic Preservation Group. And I asked my staff back in, let's see, 14 years ago, let's, let's join it in 2000. And they said, well, Brooks, that's just for cities. Well, I did my homework. I know over 1,700 cities have participated. And I said, I want to get into it. So they applied and they accepted us. And today, 14 years later, we are still the only, believe it or not, the only county in America who participates in Main Street. Now, I've got 61 communities in my county, but 32 legitimate downtowns. We have 19 downtowns through the program. So go in and look at Ferndale, look at Rochester. Uh, Raj, uh, we were in Ferndale for a meeting last week, 90% occupancy downtown. Uh, Holly, 100%. Uh, Farmington, if you look at the metamorphosis that occur between the old and the new, it's incredible. So that's another program. 
and, and they're creating jobs, even during the height of the recession. Um, I, I think so. We're not, whatever we're going to be, you know, San Francisco Bay, but we are going to be a well educated community. We're going to have some good schools. We're going to have great neighborhoods, cities that are being rejuvenated as we speak, and we're going to be good f for what we, we, we can legitimately uh, set out to do. Kelly, you work with a lot of folks on a lot of different levels, a lot of different businesses with a lot of different needs. What do we have to do if we want to maintain a leadership role, not just from community to community, but as a state? Uh, obviously, you talked earlier about something. I was giving you a hard time, but I know you're passionate about the personal property tax, which is So we do have to pass that. Yeah. We have to pass that. <laughs> Vote yes on prep one. one. Thank you. OK. But you know, it's interesting. As someone who's been in business for 26 years, um, I see that the biggest challenge for any business and, and really any community is the change over and over again in state government so that you have um, policies and regulations that change and the people you're working with change because we have this self-imposed term limit that throws out people just when they're starting to get the hang of what it is they're supposed to do. And you know, I know it's something that years ago a lot of folks supported, but it doesn't work in any way, shape, or form for us. And when I was listening to Malcolm Glad, um, Gladwin earlier this morning, he said, you know, again, it takes 7, 10, 15 years to really see how things work when you propose them. Well, how on earth can legislators see the benefits in any way, shape, or form of the work they're trying to do when if they're a state rep, they're dumped in six years? Tops, that's assuming they can get reelected. And if they're state senators, they're out in eight years. At best, if they serve all six years in the House and move to the Senate, they've got a total of 14 years. And what we've seen since term limits have passed is that fewer and fewer women in particular are running for legislative office, which I think is a, There's a huge problem. There's a market right there. Yeah, that's the problem, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So oh, I really, I we it. really need to go back and address <laughs> that issue because transportation funding would not take the god awful amount of time it's taken. The last time we've dealt with it really was 1997 when you sat your ass in a pothole and did a poster of it that got John Engler to say, "Oh yeah, we might need a tax increase." If, uh, if we need to replicate that, Brooks, I've got a pothole just yeah, by my own. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we've got uh, about 60 seconds per person. I just want to, I'm going to start uh, with you. Just go down the road. Um, this is crystal ball stuff, and nobody's going to hold you to it. I said when we started this seven years ago, nobody would have said I would have been hosting a panel called Michigan Leading the Way. Tell me what we look like in seven years mm -hmm. from your perspective in your area. What do you hope? Oh, uh, well, I, um, being from Detroit, born and raised in Detroit, um, um, I'm hoping and expecting that um, um, we'll see a, 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 a helping Mayor Duggan deliver on his promise. Repopulation in the city of Detroit, vibrant economy, obviously get this bankruptcy behind us to clean up our, our financial house, which we're moving in the right direction on that, obviously. Uh, and uh, and uh, and then just see the, the growth and the opportunities and and the commitment from the from the people in the city of Detroit to, to just to make a difference and, and make make things work, and uh, and and the, and, the, and the other thing I want to see five to seven years from now is um, the message. Um, we've got to you know make sure everybody understands that you know this message of Detroit being down and out, is gone. It's it's a place to be. It's a place of growth, a dynamic place to be. Not only Detroit but the state of Michigan as well. Give me your 60 second for you. Uh, Grand Rapids. Uh, my personal goal is is population related. You know we have been hovering or under 200,000 for a long time. My personal goal is to break 200,000. I think we can do it. Um, uh, we're attracting folks. Uh, that that metric. If you're if you if you have population growth, it means you're doing a lot of things right. You know there are a lot of folks who talk about this silver bullet here, silver bullet there. Uh, you know, but population growth, if you're doing that, if you're getting there, a lot of things are going right. Detroit, uh, I truly believe that Detroit will be one of the greatest cities in the United States, again. Here, here. Uh, every, every, every city across the nation has the problems Detroit has. If, and Mayor Duggan is right on. If we can lead in those departments, she will return, and I'm enthusiastic about it. Brooks? 
Um, seven years. I want to have a pillow fight in Oakland County. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that Saturday uh, if okay. you want. <laughs> um, I, I, I think uh, I'm looking at it from the state as opposed to the city. Sure. I think uh, Rick has us on the right direction. Uh, we got to accelerate so many things, but uh, again, the tax structure is falling into place nicely. I do believe the personal property tax will be uh, will be voted out by the public. I truly believe that. I think they're smart enough to understand that the yeah. locals will be held harmless. And then, uh, but we're still behind. Uh, if you look at the business leaders of Michigan's graphs, uh, when it comes to environment business environment. We're still not a very hospitable place to do business, and that's a totally different fight. We've got to work on that. Kelly? A million folks living in Detroit, 200,000 plus in Grand Rapids. I'm going to go for 200,000 plus in Lansing as well. What the heck? I say 11 million in Michigan because we need to beef our population back. We need a couple of congressional seats back. And of course, Proposal one passes without raising anyone's taxes. Did you mention that earlier? I did. Um, this panel is called Michigan Leading the Way. I think it is a testament to what you and thousands of others in the state have done over the past decade to make sure that that big dark cloud that hung over this gathering so often has gone away. Somebody said, look, the sun is shining, both literally and figuratively, when we look at the conversations that we've had. Congratulations to you for chairing this conference this year. I think it has been phenomenal. Thank I, you. I thought you were going to congratulate me on the weather, which well, I'm taking responsibility <laughs> for, by the way. No, well, I've got 14 meteorologists at my station that take credit for that. Uh, but uh, I, I really think that the positive uh, conversation that I hear on the island is much different than it was a few years ago. And I'll end with this one final note. Uh, a gentleman who's involved with a very big and well-established company in West Michigan came came up to me yesterday and said, you know, I've never come to this conference before. I always thought it was divisive. I always thought there was too much uh, negative talk. And he said, over the past few years, I've heard so much positivity coming out of this that I had to be here. And he's seeing it firsthand, and I believe he agrees that the message is positive. It's because of your attitudes, your activities, what you've done. Thanks to the chamber for having me for the third year. And I'll be presumptuous and say, I hope I get to come back next year. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.